Lizzie, come and see how pretty this is. Oh, that's charming, Kitty. What a pity you didn't make it bigger. We could have put it round Mr. Collins when he grows too much of a bore. Lizzie, how can you speak like that about your charming cousin? Oh, there you are, Mrs. Bennett. Oh, 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 Mr. Collins, we were just talking about you. Mrs. Bennett, I was hoping, if it would not trouble you, that I might solicit a private audience with Miss Elizabeth in the course of the morning. Private? Well, I, uh, really... Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Lizzie will be only too happy. Everyone out. Mr. Collins would like a private audience with your sister. No, no, wait, please. I beg you, Mr. Collins can have nothing to say to me that anybody need not hear. No nonsense, Lizzie. I desire you will stay where you are. Everyone else to the drawing room. Mr. Bennett? Good. Now? Jane. 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 Believe me, my dear Miss Elizabeth, that your modesty adds to your other perfections. But you can hardly doubt the object of my discourse, however your feminine delicacy may lead you to dissemble. I'm sure my attentions have been too marked to be mistaken. Almost as soon as I entered the house, I singled you out as the companion of my future life. <clears throat> Please, before my feelings run away with me, let me state my reasons for marrying. Mr. Collins. <clears throat> My reasons for marrying are, first, that I think it a right thing for every clergyman to set the example of matrimony in his parish. Secondly, that I am convinced it will add greatly to my happiness. And thirdly, which perhaps I should have mentioned first, that it is at the urging of my esteemed patroness, Lady Catherine de Burr, that I select a wife. Mr. Collins, she said, you must marry. Choose properly, she said. Choose a gentlewoman for my sake, and for your own, let her be an active, useful sort of person. Not brought up too high. Find such a woman as soon as you can. Bring her to Hunsford, and I will visit her. And your wit and vivacity, I think, must be acceptable to her, when tempered with the silence and respect which her rank will inevitably excite. My object in coming to Longbourn was to choose such a one from among Mr. Bennet's daughters. Since I am to inherit your father's estate, I should try and keep it in the family. Such an alliance will surely suit everyone. <laughs> yes. And now, nothing remains but me to assure you of the violence of my affection. Mr. Collins! And that no reproach on the subject of fortune will cross my lips once we're married. I am well aware that one thousand pounds in the four percents is all you may ever be entitled to. You are too hasty, sir. You forget that I have given no answer. Let me do so at once. I thank you for your compliments. I appreciate the honour of your proposal. Oh, my dear, <laughs> But I must decline with thanks. It is impossible for me to accept. I understand, my dear Miss Elizabeth, that it is a delicate and charming custom of young ladies to say no when they mean yes, even to three and four refusals. Mr. Collins, I am perfectly serious. You could not make me happy, and I'm convinced I'm the last woman in the world who could make you happy. <laughs> yes, I am by no means discouraged, indeed not. Upon my word, your hope is an extraordinary one in view of my declaration. I was perfectly serious in my refusal. So let's regard the incident as closed. My dear Miss Elizabeth, my situation in life, my connection with the noble family of de Burgh are circumstances highly in my favour. I think you ought to take into consideration that in spite of your loveliness and amiable qualifications, you are practically penniless. And it is by no means certain that another offer of marriage may ever be made you. I must attribute it to your wish of increasing my love by suspense in the usual manner of elegant females. Believe me, sir, I am not one of those elegant females who takes pleasure in tormenting a respectable man. I am a rational creature, speaking the truth from her heart. I thank you for the honour of your proposals, but to accept them is absolutely impossible. My feelings forbid it in every respect. Can I speak plainer? 
you are uniformly charming. And I am persuaded that when sanctioned by your excellent parents, my proposals will not fail of being acceptable. Lizzie, what? Oh. oh, my dear future son-in-law, let me be the first to wish you joy. Well, thank you, madam. Indeed, I trust I have every reason for joy. Of course, I know that my cousin's refusal uh, naturally springs from her bashful modesty. Refusal? With Lizzie, that does not mean bashful modesty, but never mind, Mr. Collins. Uh, she's a very foolish, headstrong girl and does not know her own interests. Foolish? Headstrong? Oh, dear me, well, those failings will not make her a very desirable wife. Oh, but you quite misunderstand, Mr. Collins. Uh, Lizzie is only headstrong in matters such as these. Uh, you just wait, Mr. Collins. Mr. Bennett always brings her to reason. Headstrong? Foolish? Dear me, Lady Catherine will never approve. on the occasion. Seems a hopeless business. Oh, speak to Lizzie about it yourself. Tell her you insist upon her marrying him. Let her come in. And Mr. Collins has made you an offer of marriage. It is true? Yes, sir. Right, very well. And uh, this, uh, this offer of marriage you have refused? I have. I see. <laughs> right, well, we now come to the point. Lizzie? Yes, Papa? Your mother insists that you accept Mr. Collins. Isn't that so, Mrs. Bennett? Or else I shall never see her again. An unhappy alternative is before you, Elizabeth. Your mother will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. And I will never see you again if you do. 